finally arrive at a point where I go, okay, look, having a job title is attached to an ego, right? And I think I'm done with that. I decided, okay, let's quit the radio, let's go travel the world, take off my bucket list, spend all my money until I have zero cents in the bank and let that force me to decide what I want to do next. for joining us here today. Welcome to another episode of Sit Back with Sonia, where we share brutal life lessons. And really, we're going to spill a lot of tea here today because the person joining me is someone that I hold very close to my heart and we're going to welcome her in just a second. Let's get started. So for today's guest, you may have recognized her from her radio days, which is when I knew her as well. She's been such a great friend, a mentor to me, and now she's really gallivanting around the world, doing so much exploration. We cannot wait to find out more about her experiences. Please welcome Roz! Hey! Hi, hi, hi! Thank you for joining us! <laughs> Girl, did you just hop off the airplane and join us? Or what's going on with this North Face outfit? Okay, so this is like my wardrobe now. Yeah. So whether it's today or when I'm travelling, it's it's like this. So you wanted to stay true to yourself. <laughs> I was like thinking, should I put on a dress? And then I have to pull it out of like this mothball closet because oh, I haven't no. worn one in a long time. No, I'm glad you came like this. Oh, yeah? Because this okay. is you. This is what <laughs> I see a lot on Instagram now as well. Yes, correct. All black. Safe. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Well, speaking of which, where did you just land from? Maybe you can fill our audience in. I just got back from a two month Month, I would say journey. The first month was traveling around South America with friends. Yeah. And then after they left, I somehow got onto an expedition ship that took me to Antarctica. And then I spent some more time with friends in California and I just got back two days ago. It's been a hot minute since you left MediaCorp as a radio DJ. Yes. I knew you back then when yes. I was like total rookie. I leaned on you for a lot of motivation, mm. advice and all I'm that. I'm a very sturdy being to lean on. You definitely are. You definitely are. <laughs> I don't move. I wanted to take you down memory lane a little bit. Oh, don't. So I... <laughs> hey, memory lane for me is a very uh, long timeline. No, don't worry. It's not too far away. <laughs> okay. I had to go to Facebook to download them. And I haven't touched Facebook in years. You didn't go far back enough, man. I was on Friendster, yo. I... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Friendster no more already. Like, I think the, the domain is gone. Yeah. This was one of the first few pictures we took back then. Oh my god, this is when you won! <laughs> yeah, when I won the contest. Ross was my mentor during the contest. You definitely changed your style over the years, yeah. so did I. And I look back, I'm like, wow, I got some questionable fashion choices. <laughs> Do you even remember this? We went shopping Top or shop. something. And I don't know why I was in pink shorts, but I was. So I remember Top Shop because you had just joined 987. Yeah. And I don't think you were getting any invites to parties back no, then. No, no, no. I was at like, all. I wanted Sonia to come to every single party. You know, I wanted you to be on magazine covers and everything. Thank so you. like we're all going out to places and look at where she is now. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Not me though, it's all her. <laughs> no, 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 but, but whenever, truthfully, truthfully, when people talk to me about my career, ask me about it, I always mm -hmm. attribute a lot of it to you as well in the beginning stages because you do need someone to kind of help you open some doors, mm -hmm. you know, and you were generous enough to do that for me, which I don't think anyone or any, everyone would do that. Mm -hmm. And then look at us. Okay, if you could see this, I was still wearing a midriff top. And you still mm -hmm. got like a ton of eyeshadow here. I was like, uh, no. <laughs> That is not the aesthetic anymore. Okay, let me switch aesthetics. This was Color Run, if oh. you recall that. We did not run. Do you remember the Color Run, guys? We, we did not. We did not run. We were walking and then we got swept by sweepers because yeah. we were so slow. Because we were the last ones. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was a little walk down oh memory lane. God. Good memory. You remember a lot of the events that we went to. Actually. Yeah, this memory thing and age, not usually like, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> so since you left till now, any thoughts about it? Like, oh, I regret my decision, or I don't, or no. I'm, I'm enjoying myself, my best <laughs> life, what yes. is it? I think MediaCorp had a place in my life. You know, it gave a lot of great opportunities. I made a lot of great friends, interviewed my favorite stars. Mm. It was great, but you know, I was turning 40, and I was like, this can't be the only thing I'm, I'm doing for the rest of my life. Um, there's a great big world out there, and you know, as a radio presenter, you can't take more than two weeks off. I know that. So you can't <laughs> go far, and I've always wanted to go to South America. Yeah. I've never not gotten a stable salary for months, yeah. uh, for forever. Yeah. Um, so to suddenly become a freelancer was tough as well. Yeah. So it took me about six months to like finally arrive at a point where I go, okay, look, having a job title is attached to an ego, right? Like, you know, you want to have a fancy job title um, so that people could look up to you or, or whatever. And I think I'm done with that. 
I decided, okay, let's quit the radio, let's go travel the world, take off my bucket list, spend all my money until I have zero cents in the bank and let that force me to decide what I want to do next. Honestly, I can't relate because yes. to me, I also struggle with the whole like stability thing, you know, especially during COVID mm -hmm. when we had no jobs at all. And I really struggled with that. I was like, wow, if we were to make such a decision right now, right, mm -hmm. you would lose your base pay. You know, there's so much uncertainty. So mm -hmm. really, a lot of respect for you to do that in that phase as well. So now, we're going to move on to a bit of a mystery box game. I don't know what is inside, okay? okay. I have no idea. So are you ready to stick your hand in there? Because I have no idea what's... It better not be a lizard, okay? I don't know. Okay. Actually, I can't guarantee. Even if it's a fake lizard. I will do things that will <laughs> like, that will endanger people here. Yes. But it's not me, but I didn't I didn't set this up. It was the crew. You know when I do these kind of things, usually I get paid. Yeah. <laughs> so Producer, hello. Are we paying her enough? Oh, the answer is no. Sorry. Okay, I'm kidding. Close your eyes. Ready? Mm -hmm. Can I not just look away but open okay. my eyes? Okay. Ready? Stabilizing force. Okay. What the hell? It's just a bunch of paper. Okay. Pick 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 something up. She did not pick anything up. <laughs> It's just a lot oh, of... Oh she got it, she got it's it. There's a lot of things. Guys, guys, it's just paper. Why didn't oh. you disguise paper with paper? It doesn't make sense. I know. Okay, open it. The most expensive trip you've been on and how much did it cost? Oh my god. I think you definitely have an answer for that. Okay, I think the most expensive trip I've been on and this cost me everything was my trip to the North Pole. And this was a three-day journey and it was not just like going on a ship. It was a full journey and I got to stay on an ice patch yeah. with a camp, the Barnio Ice Camp, set up by Russians and Ukrainians. Wow. Which obviously does not exist today. Yeah. So this was back in 2018, three days on the Barnio Ice Camp, and then we got to get heli dropped to 90 degrees north. Wow. It was pretty amazing. And only 200 people get to be at this camp a year. Mm. So these are people who uh, um, do the North Pole Marathon. Crazy what is people. that? How do you... You, you run on a ice? marathon yeah, in circles, basically, because you know, when you're in the North Pole, there's no land. Right. So it's just moving pieces of ice that are moving when the Earth is rotating on an axis. So right. you can't really calculate distance. So they would have to track, like, okay, this is a circle that's 100 meters. You run this oh circle times, God. don't know how many times, right? That's kind of crazy. Something like that. Then people who ski the final degree do that and then there are people like me who get heli dropped to yeah. 90 degrees now. I'm with you all the way on that, by the way. So how so, much did that cost, that whole trip? A few months worth of decision making and 20,000 US dollars. I thought it was going to be 50 or something. No, but you see, it doesn't include the trip there. Oh, it's just for the tour. Just the experience. The tour, yeah. And then in my group, there were like 20 of us and it was only me and this other teacher from New Zealand that actually dug into our savings for this trip. Wow. Everyone else was either a trust fund kid or oh. like people who are born into generational wealth. Right. So it was a very strange trick Mixed. to be on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, okay, my, my story is not as exciting, yeah. but um, <laughs> it's more personal because I, pre-COVID, um, I actually brought my family to Europe for the very first time. Like they've yeah. never traveled to that part of the world, but they yeah. wanted to see like the Christmas markets and, mm -hmm. and everything. And I flew them business for the first time in their life wow. they've not actually flown it wasn't Singapore Airlines because I couldn't afford that that was way too much yeah. but all in all I think I did spend about 20 to 25,000 on Whoa. that trip but it was for the whole family that is amazing and how old were you then? late 20s in my 20s wow when I was yeah. in my late 20s I was still struggling with yeah. identity crisis um, definitely did not have that amount of money I was it? very broke and after that by the way yeah but I didn't have the money to begin with in my 20s right, so that's right. that's amazing and I love how you always put your family first thank you you know and yeah. it's like I think that's why you keep on working sometimes you put yourself in a less than desirable situation sometimes right. when you're not happy, but you're like, no, I gotta do this for my family. I generally feel very rewarded and, mm -hmm. you know, doing this for, for my family because I'm very close to them. Mm -hmm. And time is finite. Time is yeah. finite. In all your travels, you know, you solo travel a lot. Were there any moments where you were scared? Mm, it, the one thing that really stands out was that time I was in Cuba with no US dollars. Oh. <laughs> that was when I realized how powerless the Singapore dollar is. Mm. And I found myself like two weeks left to go in Cuba and I had no money. So how did you solve it? So I had so much Singapore dollars with me, right? I wanted to look and hunt down like a British tourist because at least then, you know, being our old colonial masters, they would understand <laughs> that Singapore actually has like, We have know, a friendship. We have an yeah. economy. <laughs> yeah. But thankfully I didn't have to do that. I called up my friend who's a banker, managed to find a landline and then she had to use her mom's phone and put my bank on speakerphone. Oh. So I was talking to my bank through 
speakerphone oh my. from her mom's phone. <laughs> it was very strange, but I got my bank to authorize my credit card um, magnetic stripe. And then with that, I went to like an equivalent of the Western Union there mm. and got some money out. I remember you did one where you were in like, you stayed in some sort of a place that looked like a container almost. Oh, that was scary for you, but oh. I was very happy. Why? <laughs> yeah. Why? Okay, so this was in a place called Socotra, uh, an island of Yemen that is like 400 kilometers away or something. That island is very undeveloped. So there are no hotels whatsoever. Mm. And seven out of eight days, I was wild camping. And then I get to this hotel called the Heathrow Hotel. Sounds reliable. <laughs> yeah. But it is a container. It's like one of those boxes. It looked like a camp, okay? But it was like the best thing ever. The air con was strong. Oh. Okay. The bed was comfortable, the water had pressure, oh. there's internet, oh, <laughs> you know, okay. so I was like hugging the toilet bowl, this is the best thing ever, <laughs> but it's not lah. It, yeah. yeah, it looks quite shabby to all my friends I showed it. I, I remember actually yeah. us having this conversation, are you alright? Like, are you stuck <laughs> somewhere? Is this your last resort hotel? No, I actually thing? chose that hotel because wow. there's so many hotels in town that had a lot more character, yeah. but there was no Wi-Fi. Okay. And after seven days, I just wanted to catch up. Yeah. Where do you think you became so self-assured? Because when people look at you, they always mm see this super strong, gung-ho kind of person ready for any adventure? I think it's not by choice. I've discovered that I'm the sort of person who is hyper-independent. And I used to think that was a good thing. But in my adult life, like my late 30s till now, I realised that this hyper-independence comes from trauma. Like, you know, it's like an upbringing where you have very little support and you pretty much have to kind of fend for yourself. And it's not because I've had horrible parents or whatever, but they were absent and I mean one was absent, my dad was absent, he left us when I was 11. But my mom was also, she had to work three jobs, you know, two to three jobs just to keep food on the table and put us through school. And we had to communicate with each other through post-it notes, which I still have to this very day because 19 years ago when my mom died, we discovered this suitcase where she kept every single note we wrote to her, oh. every single card we made. And then I realised how much we never saw each other. You know, like I had to write things like, oh, tomorrow is um, tomorrow I need $4 for school and it's because I need to do this. This is every day from like primary school <laughs> all the way to secondary school to poly. I would paste it on a door yeah. because by the time I go to sleep, she would be at work and then she'll come back and then the money will be in my pocket. Oh. So it'll be things like that. So this hyper-independence from a very young age, obviously you get so used to it. And then after that, you just have to make your own decisions. I'm comfortable making my own decisions. But really, all I really want is for someone to like make decisions for me. You know, mm. I want to get to a point where I can trust people to just take over because it is very tiring. Just on a lighter note, I mm -hmm. also wanted to bring up a time where we travelled together that mm -hmm. I became terrified of you for a second. <laughs> Wait, what hold on, let me, let me explain first. Let what me was explain. This? this came up when you talked about you know um, being very independent, making mm -hmm. decisions, and I'm sure that as a traveller, you're also very independent, right? You're like, okay, I want to do this, 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 this. We were on a work trip. So on one of the off days, we made plans to go to a neon junkyard. Oh my god, okay. I I remember that, but I only remember good things. Help. No, no, it was a good, it was a good <laughs> trip. In the end, it was a good trip. But, but... Look at what I'm doing to the post-it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so nervous. <laughs> I overslept that morning. Oh, shit, I don't remember yeah, this. Yeah, you don't remember this. I overslept. When you knocked on my door and opened it, I was still in my pyjamas and my hair was a mess. And I was like shocked. I was like, oh my god, I missed my alarm. And you were like, you haven't made up yet. <laughs> you haven't done your hair and makeup yet. I was like, oh my god, I'm sorry. Like, okay, I'll, I'll go and, I'll go and I'll do it now. <laughs> when I went down, I was just like, oh my god, what do I say? Like, I was like, do I say sorry? Do I say anything? Like, what do I do? And the whole ride to the junkyard, we were silent in the car. <laughs> I don't know if you remember That this. sounds like me though. I'm but still like, like that. You were singing in the front like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, <laughs> I've got a shrink bag right now. <laughs> it's not even work, you know, it's a fun day. It was a fun day. So that was definitely one of the moments where yeah. I... Oh my I, god, I am <laughs> so sorry! No, 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 not at all, not at all, not at all. Lasting memory. I mean, look, like, a lot of the things that we do, our behaviours yeah. and, you know, how we treat people around us and, and yeah. deal with situations also come with, you know, in regards to our background. So maybe I want to ask the audience this at this point in time, does your background define you? That mm. is the question of three, two, one, let's see it. Oh, it's a lot you don't of red. think your background defines you? Interesting. I think a part of your personality would be, of course, shaped by your upbringing. Yeah. 
But to say that your background will define who you are mm -hmm. is a bit of a long shot. Right? It could define certain things or explain yeah. certain things. It would explain certain yeah. things, but it wouldn't define who mm. you are. How long do you, can you go saying like, oh, because I had a bad childhood, therefore mm. I am the way I am today, deal with it. Mm. You cannot, there's no excuse for that. Like once you're past a certain age, you take responsibility for your past and your current actions, right? Mm. It's up to you to make your environment and the people around you feel comfortable. On that note, I like that you brought it up because yeah. you yourself have mentioned earlier on that yeah. you've been through some stuff as well. How then do you harness that and become positive about it? I, I'm not positive about it. I hate the word positivity, mm. but I think self-awareness is very important. Yeah. Like you want to surround yourself with people who can call you out. Not many yeah. people will. Yeah, exactly. I was going to yeah. go there. Who would dare to call you out? Exactly. That's how I decide who are my inner circle. Yeah. Because I can't be around people who feel intimidated by me. Yeah. I mean, they might be the nicest people on earth and I sometimes wish we could be better friends, but like I feel like we're not on the same level. If you always see me as someone more intimidating or someone inferior, then we can never be close friends. Yeah. Yeah. And that's okay. You just become very selective with your inner circle people. Exactly. Don't you, aren't you guys also yeah. extremely selective? Yes. No time, right, for drama. I know that you know this. I have trouble saying no and mm -hmm. I gave away too much time yeah. to people that perhaps I don't actually want to give my time to. And I always look to you as like, wow, she really knows mm -hmm. who she wants to surround herself with. Yeah, but I think it's okay also. I think um, like talking to you sometimes when I yell at you and go like, why would you want to still talk to this person? Yeah. But I think the beauty of your... She does, she does. Yeah. Like the beauty of your personality and your character, and I think that's why a lot of people love working with you and gravitate towards you is because you do have like empathy towards people and you're not super attached to these people. So mm. you actually engage with them on a very superficial but polite manner, not fake, mm. you know? And I think that's a superpower in itself. Thank you. Yeah, I I cannot do that. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, it's impossible for me. Like, it's you will always know where you stand with me. Actually, I think that the fact that you are unapologetically yourself mm -hmm. is what people like about you. Because you're just putting it out there as it is. Mm -hmm. you know? But has this ever cost you any friendships before? I think I had good media corp training. Let's just yeah. put it that way. <laughs> I got into some trouble during my radio days being too opinionated. I have to kind of like learn all the many ways to skin a cat without getting myself into trouble. Right? And I try to apply that with friends as well. So sometimes when I share an opinion on, on social media, yeah. I try to think of the many people who are reading it who might think it's about them. <laughs> so I try to like edit a little bit because the people I really care about, I really care about their feelings. So I want to try to make it into not so much like an opinion, but more like a question. Yeah. Could it be yeah. that it's this? Not like, it is this. Yeah. And I think also it's how people take it. I mean, it's all about perception. Mm -hmm. Have you ever fallen out with someone that you really, you really regretted that situation? No. Mm. I, think, I think those kinds of friendships um, deserve to be let go. Yeah. But my best friend and I, we have... I mean, we've known each other since we were in Sec 3. And our friendship has taken like, wow, it's gone on a journey, man. We've split up twice. Oh. At one point in, my, in our 20s, I was asking like, why are we best friends? We have nothing to say to each other. Mm. You love shopping, I hate shopping. Are we together because we have been friends since we're 15? Let's evaluate. And then we took a few years, and we weren't really talking to each other. Then we got back again. Every stage in our lives, we're always trying to make sure that we're not best friends because of old time's sake and actually offering some sort of like valuable support in each other's lives. So we're in a very good place right now because mm. of that. It just occurred to me that some people that you hang out with now, we almost have nothing to say to each other. Yeah. You're absolutely right. It is a phase of life yeah. and sometimes we don't all grow at the same pace, right? Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we're still stuck in a place where we're figuring something out, but mm -hmm. your friends or some other people in the group are already like far ahead. Yep. And it makes me feel a bit sad because yep. these people have been such an intrinsic part of my life for such a long time. Mm. But for some reason, for the friends that I've made in my adult life, mm -hmm. I'm able to share a lot more with them. Okay, let's just put it this way. Like, I've got friends that have been around for decades in my life, right? Yeah. And then I go on one trip to North Korea, and then there are like five people in my tour group. And suddenly, we are like staying in touch. Yeah. We're always talking about Super the experience. Tight. We're talking about other trips. And it's because the mere fact that you decide to go to North Korea. So sometimes you don't need years and years of friendship. You know, sometimes you just need that one weird experience that you bond on. And also like, I feel like it's very limiting when you meet up with old secondary school friends. So all you keep talking about is like, oh, remember that time that teacher did this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like every year you meet up and talk about that. Like, it's like, come on, let's move on. Yeah, no, it's true. Because uh, recently as well, like I had the pleasure of traveling with some of my friends from Mm -hmm. from school. It turned out really well, but I also had a fear, like, what if this trip 
turn our friendship sour. Like, has this ever happened to you when you travel with friends? Or? I definitely know who I don't want to travel with. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, there was one trip. Um, we were going to Morocco, uh, Morocco. Four girls, so me and three friends. It was supposed to be a solo trip, but these three girls decided to come along. One girl <laughs> oh, started dear. to make this comment. Uh -huh. So we were like on the road going from city to city, and then she was like, "Wow, this place is very poor. Oh, it's no. so dirty." Then I was like, "What the?" Would yeah. you say that, you know, like we're in someone's country, let's just yeah. like roll with it. And then I found out later, this woman thought that we're in Monaco the whole time. No! What? So I was like, how could you be so blind? We bought the tickets, we arrived at the airport, we Wait. were planning this trip. <laughs> Hold on, those are very, two very different places. I know, exactly. So oh. I just know in my mind that I cannot be friends with this person or yeah. even travel with her ever again. But mm -hmm. you also learn who you love to travel with. Yes. And I think that's also something valuable at the end of the yeah. day. So we asked our audience members actually um, their thoughts on breaking up with friends. Ooh. So let's see what some of the responses here, okay? okay? Just Ghost was the first one. Just Ghost. Communicate on what happened to the friendship and try your best to solve it. Mm -hmm. What can't be solved by communication? If all is in vain, friends come and go as we grow older anyway. And the last one is, just fight and argue about it. If your friend can't survive the fight, that's not the friend that you want. Mm. Yeah. Unlike a romantic relationship, there is no script. Yeah. You know, it's not you, it's me. There's none of that in friendship. Yeah. And friendship is way more common than a romantic relationship where it's like one-on-one -on -one with one partner. Yes. If we're not into polygamy. Yeah. So like for friendship, it's like, oh, we have a lot of friends. So to be excluded from this big group of people that's supposed to be in your network, yeah. it's very isolating yeah. and embarrassing. Yeah. So most people will tend to ghost. Basically avoid... Yeah, you're just like, okay, confronting. slowly, slowly, I don't talk to you. Then slowly, slowly, I don't see you. And then boom, you're out of yeah. my life. Yeah, you know, I, I've taken that way many times also. Okay, so now that we've known Roz, we're going to play a little game of Two Lies, One Truth. Oh God. Okay? So she's given us a statement that yes. is the truth earlier on. So what you have to do is, you have to now vote and tell us which statement you think is the truth. So I'm going to read out the statements. And from the first statement, whoever thinks that that is the truth, you put your pedals down. And then I'll move on to the next one and then the next one. All right, everyone put your panels up right now. Uh, okay, so the first statement is, I cancelled my friend's flight ticket after we fought on a trip. How many of you think that is true? Put it down. Okay, wow, quite a lot of people think that that one's true. Okay. okay, next one. I unfriended a friend because I didn't like her partner. And the last statement is, I unfollow my friends who are toxic online but remain friends with them in person. So the rest of you think that's the right answer. You guys are actually right. All right. Oh. Everyone wants to win with a Starbucks voucher. Those that got it right, of course. Thank you so much for playing. Now we need to know, you unfollowed friends, yes. but remain friends with them in person. Did yes. they ever confront you about yes, it? Yes, some people have. Uh, the most famous one that I have unfollowed on Instagram, but remain friends in real life, is Xia Xue. Mm. And she, of course, knows. Yeah, no, yeah. she only found out like a year plus later. Oh. Wait, what? Because she's not people. some person who will sit around and count who unfollows her. She's not that type of a yeah. person. Apparently, someone who followed her told her. Oh. I was in Iran at that time, about to have dinner with a new friend that I made, and she's like, Ross, can I ask you a simple question? I was like, no, not now. I'm having dinner. Why do you unfollow me on Instagram? It's like, oh, damn. Here so, we go. I have to voice note now. No, yeah. So, and I just said, hey, didn't we just meet up? Don't I text you every week? Yeah. You know, we, we still hang, right? I just don't like who you are online. But that doesn't mean I don't like who you are as a person and we've been friends for such a long time, appreciate who you are as a person. Yeah. So I, I, I took, she's like, why couldn't you have mute me? It's just so much more friendlier. I was like, yeah, but I wanted you to know that I didn't like you online. Oh <laughs> my God, I could never do that. I think muting people is such a coward way. If you really don't want to see their stuff, then just unfollow lah. Well, I've muted people, no. I feel very cowardly now. <laughs> I mean, I want to see people's feeds, like people I care about and stuff, True. right? Just wanted to slip this in because we haven't actually she got them to catch up before, uh, ever since you got back. Are you seeing anybody right now, currently? No, I'm not. Not I, even I, dating? I, is it because you saw my recent post? Good. Yeah! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> hey, am I so predictable? This person <laughs> is like a friend of an ex-boyfriend of mine and we've been friends for 12 years and there's no way in hell oh. I'll ever date him. Oh. And I feel like nowadays I like to take pictures more of people and if okay. the backdrop wasn't as stunning, I wouldn't post a photo of just him. No, yeah, I know, it, I did notice the scenery as the well, but of course I noticed that speck there was a person. Yes, it, it's been seven years, no boyfriend. Has there ever been a moment where you're like, oh, like, you know? They're either gay or taken. Oh man. Yeah. Okay, so and I think I will find my life partner in my early 50s mm -hmm. when we're just 
really into companionship and not so much about the physical attraction and stuff. But you don't feel that you've sacrifice a lot of that romantic side of your life to lead the lifestyle that you're leading? You no. don't see it that way? No, I think the romantic life being out of my life has given me a lot of peace. <laughs> like oh. Emotional stability. Because when I fall for someone, it is messy. Like I can't control myself. I'll be like sobbing, writing letters. Like why? <laughs> this is the playlist. I write video. I'll make videos for oh you and stuff. God. Yeah, it's horrible. It's disgusting. And then like I wanted to like stabilize myself emotionally. And then one year of that happening, two years, three years. Oh, this feels nice. This peace. And then four years. And then now it's seven years. But hey, I'm still keeping Hinge open. But if the opportunity were to present itself and someone yeah. came along that you were like, oh, you know, I don't mind getting to know you, yeah. you, would, you would go for it? Yeah, I will always go for it. Yeah. I'll just give it one shot. Yeah. But I think, right, the guy that I'm looking for yes. is probably like an Icelandic Viking that is probably like Excuse seven me. foot tall, okay. speaks five words of English, okay. and has a damn banging bod. So purely physical? Purely physical, because okay. I've got everything else, right? Okay. I've got my house paid for, I make my own money. I have friends like you to have intelligent right. conversations uh -huh. with. Um, <laughs> to talk I just about need, the Vikings. <laughs> I just miss a warm body. Uh, and I don't need that guy to... Yeah. <laughs> waiting for me in Iceland. I guess that's your next destination. You're going to go Correct. find your man over there. Yep. Before I whip this out, what is the one most important lesson you feel that you've learned about yourself mm. over the past decade? I definitely found out that I also not only have daddy issues, I also have mummy issues, which is mind-blowing. At 42, I discovered that. Mm -hmm. I think right now, it's not so much more of what I discovered, but what I want for myself yeah. is to strike a balance between who to fight for and who to keep, uh, who to cut. Mm. Yeah, and not to be so decisive when it comes to cutting people off from my life. It's just like, you know, let's fight a little bit. It's let's a process. Just, yeah, it's a process. Last year, when I was 43, 44, <laughs> 44 was the first year I allowed my birthday to be celebrated. It's a big yeah. milestone. Yeah, so before that, my friends would buy me a birthday cake and I would just shout at them and make them feel so miserable. Oh no. But last year, it was like, okay, buy me all the cake, celebrate like, me and Embrace everything. it. Embrace it. So, yeah. so this will be the trajectory I'm like setting myself on from here okay. on. I yeah. like that, I like that. Thank you so much for yeah. sharing. Yeah. Thank you. Yay. Now it's the time on Sit Back. Based on yeah. your personality, your yeah. character, we're going to craft a cocktail. Oh God. I'm no bartender and I'm never <laughs> prepped for this segment. I'm just going to go in blind and see what we do. Okay. Okay, so let's go. <laughs> I found a uh, gin here okay. that says Nord's Gin. Oh, we're projecting. Yes, we are, proje we are manifesting. <laughs> this was not planned, by the way, because we did not know she was going to talk about Viking men, okay? <laughs> she did not, we did not know that at all. I usually don't go for white men. Just, just want to put it out there. But you know, when it's a Viking... It's different. It hits different. Correct. Okay, we're going to get some ice in. She's <laughs> working really hard, this girl. Okay, so I'm going to add some. Tell me when to stop! She doesn't even use a jigger! <laughs> oh, oh, yeah! Oh, you are too late, whatever. Okay, so wait, do I end there or do I continue? How much you Continue, want okay. Enough la! Okay, okay, get ready. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I can Sorry. smell it from here. I'm gonna just put this in, okay? No yeah. artificial sweeteners, you know, very straight up. And then, what do you think about adding some Tabasco? Let's do it. Because she's dished out so much spicy information today. I think we need to have a dash of spice. Yes. Okay. This is going up tasting like Tom Yum, but with alcohol. All right, now I'm gonna give it a little shake. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> what so, are you doing? It's wait, so it feels like it's exploding. That's why I gotta go slow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> ah. Wait, can't you just stir it? Yeah. I'm gonna go with that. Okay, I have news for you. The Tabasco floats. <laughs> hey, I mean, look. It actually looks quite... Oh, the Tabasco blended. So I'm gonna put an umbrella in Rosa's and my glass. Why? Just to piss me off. Because... Yeah? Occasionally, we throw shade. <laughs> right? So we throw shade, so that's why. Oh my god. Okay. There we go! Isn't this cute? I mean... <laughs> Cheers! Oh my god. Okay, let's give it a taste test. What do you guys think we should name this cocktail? If you have any ideas, please let us know. You know what it smells like? Wait, you already smelled You tasted it? Yeah, I tasted it. Does it not taste and smell like car freshener? <laughs> <laughs> you are right! Why does it taste like car I don't know. I can smell the Tabasco and that's what's giving it that petroleum it. kind of... <laughs> you know, petroleum! You know the dangerous thing about this drink? is you that don't taste it. No, because the Tabasco floats, 
You get it at the back of your throat <laughs> after that. Yeah, it hurts. It hurts, okay. When you least expect it. Yeah, well, that's you, unexpected. <laughs> Very really? unexpected. Okay, thank you so much. Yay! Please give us a big round of applause. <laughs> if you enjoyed today's episode, please like, share, subscribe, tell all your friends about it, leave a comment as well, and we'll catch you in the next episode of Sit Back with Sonia. See you next time! <laughs> Cheers! Cheers. Cheers. Oh my, I need to check Hinge now. Oh, can we swipe together? Can you swipe together? Okay, okay. <laughs> then you just see her okay. face. Okay, there are three now. Goodbye. No! No, no. You know, one day I will find a guy that has the same aesthetic. I, right. I think the Viking might be shirtless though. Or he can wear the jacket and be petless. That I'm is not true. picky. This is evolving into a very different kind of show right now. <laughs> Look at the crew, the crew excited yeah. too. They were like, ooh. <laughs>